If you focus on all the things this place isn't, you'll put your head in the oven and blow out the pilot light. The homosexual agenda is destroying this nation, okay? It's just a fact. I'm not anti, I'm not gay bashing, but according to God's word, that is not the right kind of lifestyle. It has deadly consequences. So it's the death knell of this country. I honestly think it's the biggest threat even that our nation has, even more so than terrorism or Islam, which I think is a big threat, okay? If you've got cancer or something in your little toe, do you say, well, you know, I'm just going to forget about it because the rest of me's fine. It spreads, okay? And this stuff is it's deadly and it's spreading and it will destroy uh, our young people. It will destroy this nation. Do you stand with Sally Kern? Babies who are born don't hate. They don't know how to hate. They have to be taught to hate. This rally, freedom of speech rally for Sally, is really about freedom of speech for all of us who want to stand up for the truth of God's word. Representative Kern has repeatedly used her public office to demonize lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender Oklahomans and to attempt to deny them the exact same civil liberties she now defends so passionately. When I gave that, that infamous speech, I was not putting down any individual. Not by judging people by their character. Not by judging people individually of what they do and what they don't do but judging entire groups. And that can be the worst hatred of all. In a triple play of intolerance, Representative Kern offends lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender Americans, thousands of women and men defending the United States from terrorist attacks, and Muslims worldwide. Muslims respect the civil rights of all our neighbors. Divisive comments are counterproductive and distract our legislature and all Oklahomans from far more important issues that this state and this nation must focus on. I enlisted in the U.S. Air Force two weeks after high school graduation. Sally Kern's comments were not only absurd, but also ignorant and hurtful on a very per personal level. She said that homosexuality is worse than terrorism, that it's worse than Islam, a cancer in the toe of society. This came from a fellow Oklahoman representing my home state and my country. My dad is a cancer survivor. I am gay. I studied under Muslim instructors. I served my country dutifully and honorably for six years of my life. We need not only protection from outside sources looking to destroy America, we need protection from within, from people like Sally Kern. Thank you. I believe each and every person is created in God's image and is precious in His sight. He loves all of us. He loves all of us equally and He loves all of us regardless of what our sin is. Yet, God is not just a God of love. He is also a righteous and holy God. She seems to claim that her take on the gospel of Jesus Christ is the only legitimate one and her opinion about sexual orientation is the proper and correct Christian one. While she may feel that way, the scope of the Christian community does not. I told the people when I was running for this office that I was a Christian candidate and that I believe we were in a cultural war for the very existence of our Judeo-Christian values. This situation, this situation proves that I was right. Tulsa Interfaith Alliance urges all Oklahomans to stand firm for equal treatment for all and to continue to speak up against speech that could harm or lead to harm of others, especially those unfairly targeted simply because they may be different. I am Nancy McDonald, married to Dr. Joseph McDonald, and we have four children, three straight and one gay. I am offended as a mother by Representative Sally Kern's remarks about my child 
who was gay. I believe that gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender persons are as American as any other citizen in this country. And to make any kind of disparaging remarks about them is abhorrent and abusive to every American citizen. I was born in New York in 1967, and my parents lived in the city, and then they bought their first house in Long Island when my sister was born. And in 1975, my father was transferred with his job with IBM to Dallas, and we lived there for almost three years. And then in 1978, moved to Atlanta, Georgia. And I went to middle school and high school there, and then I went to the University of Georgia in Athens. And when I graduated from there in 1990, uh, 1989, I worked for a few months on Capitol Hill in Senator Sam Nunn's office. And then I started my doctorate at the University of Virginia. And during part of my time in grad school, I went back to DC to do my research, but I also then gravitated to, I was coming out then, and uh, it was an exciting time in the movement with the March on Washington in 1993. And I started volunteering at some of the national groups, particularly the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force. I was an intern for the Gay and Lesbian Victory Fund for a, a while, and uh, then I moved back to Charlottesville to finish my dissertation and then came out to Oklahoma. When I was interviewing at OSU, I really thought, my gosh, is this going to be a place where I have to go and be in the closet? Because if it is, I'm not going to take this job. And I was very lucky in that one of my colleagues was uh, savvy enough to uh, recognize that there might be a reason that one of the courses I teach is the history of sexuality in the United States. And he, in a very politic, non-prying way during my interviews, sort of said, look, if this is a personal thing for you, I want you to know there's been precedent in the department and you'll be fine. Although I wouldn't recommend being out university-wide until you've been here a while. And that immediately put me at ease. And um, when I was partnered at the time and when my partner did move out to Oklahoma the following year, she was always treated just like any other spouse in the department. We were really welcomed with open arms. We made the choice not to live in Stillwater, although I had lived there the first year. It was just too small. I was really about to lose my mind. And if you want a, a partner that has a job that doesn't involve preparing or handling raw food or pumping gas, the options are somewhat limited there. So we moved to Tulsa. And we didn't think we were going to stay here for very long. And, but after about three years, and I was getting you know, good interviews, but not quite the next thing, I thought, well, gosh, I might actually get tenured here and be here for a long time. And at that point, I had to do a little uh, mental shift. Because if you focus on all the things this place isn't, you'll put your head in the oven and blow out the pilot light. But if you flip it around, particularly if you are someone who is an activist, and say, wow, what a great place to affect social change. I had to sit with, you know, being told, you know, you can't be out loud and proud at, at OSU. And I think uh, that was really coming from a place of care uh, because the person knew the institutional culture of OSU much better than I did. But the interesting thing was from the very first semester I got to OSU, and it's not like I walked into my giant US history survey class and go, hi, I'm a big dyke. Let's learn about the Marshall Plan. It was somehow known in the underground of the LGBT students there that suddenly there was an openly gay professor. And there are not many of us there. And I had random LGBT students just show up in my office just because they wanted to talk to me or you know, have a figure of authority that they felt was supportive. And it's been quite remarkable in the last 10 years. You know, you get a really interesting window on to um, social attitudes of young people if you're a college professor, because about 90% of my students are between 18 to 22. And where the first semester I taught at OSU, the mere mention in my US survey class that the Stonewall riots sparked the modern gay rights movement, I, uh, that prompted a student to write a complaint on his teaching evaluation that I'll never forget it that said, this is the class in American history. I don't understand why I have to learn about gay people. 
But 10 years later, I have many students who openly identify as LGBT or say they have LGBT parents or the LGBT friends. Half the students who go to the, um, the SOTA, or the gay rights organization at OSU, are straight. And students frequently will voluntarily pick out of, they get many choices of what they wish to read in my courses. They'll pick books about the gay rights movement just because they're curious. Oh, and they'll say really nuanced things like, well, this doesn't really square with my religious beliefs, but I don't see how two people of the same gender getting married could possibly hurt my marriage and don't think the state should have that. And so there's been an amazing seismic shift in uh, attitudes of people under 30, even in a place as conservative as Oklahoma can be. You know, we are really at a turning point in this city where we could really acknowledge that this city has a lot of vibrancy and diversity, and maybe that can really improve life for everybody here, because I don't think that the reputation that Tulsa has for being an intolerant place has done anything positive for the city, certainly not in economic terms. I have lost count over the last 10 years of the number of talented, energetic, young people that cannot wait to get out of Oklahoma because they feel like they'll never be able to be their authentic selves here. Be it because they're liberal, be it because they just don't fit into the Susie Sorority, Freddie frat boy ideal, or be it because they're gay and lesbian. And those are a lot, the precisely the sort of creative, engaged people that we need to lift this state out of a lot of insularity and poverty and horrible record on things like health care and domestic violence and child abuse. And hopefully we can do that. Because um, I think there are an awful lot of positive things that get lost in the shuffle when people just make the blanket assumption that being in Oklahoma means you're just an intolerant bigot. My own state has one of the most conservative approaches to gay rights issues in the world. I mean, they're closer to third world dictatorships than they are to civilized countries. <laughs>